on Friday, October 5th, 1956, in Washington University in St. Louis. In a modest laboratory hidden from the world's attention, Dr. Stanley Cohen leans closer to his microscope. His hands steady, his breath held. What he's witnessing isn't just science, it's something almost supernatural. A cluster of skin cells, damaged and worn, begins to regenerate, not slowly but with astonishing speed, as if time itself is being reversed. At the center of this phenomenon, a single molecule, unnoticed by the world until now. Epidermal growth factor, EGF. This isn't a miracle, it's science. A molecule that signals cells to heal, renew, and regenerate. Faster than nature ever intended. Fast enough to smooth wrinkles, fade scars, and restore youth to aging skin. The discovery earns Cohen the Nobel Prize. But something strange happens next. As the years pass, EGF's potential in skincare is whispered about in research circles, yet never embraced by the mainstream. In an industry obsessed with anti-aging, why has one of the most powerful tools for skin regeneration remained in the dark? Is it too good to be true? Or is there something, someone, ensuring that growth factors stay hidden? After all, when billions are made selling fleeting results, what happens when a solution that actually works threatens the entire system? This is the story of growth factors, how they could change everything we know about anti-aging skincare, and why you've never heard the full truth. Two, a discovery ahead of its time. Flashback to 1946. In the shadow of World War II, amidst the turmoil and devastation, a young scientist named Rita Levy Montalcini, forced into exile, sets up a makeshift lab in her bedroom. Driven by unrelenting curiosity and desperation, she peers through a modest microscope, not knowing she's about to change science forever. She discovers nerve growth factor, NGF, a protein that commands cells to grow, heal, and survive. NGF is groundbreaking, but there's a problem. It's fragile, too fragile. Every attempt to harness its power is thwarted by its instability. The scientific world is impressed, but the beauty industry? Uninterested. Fragility is an enemy skincare formulations cannot afford. Fast forward to the 1950s. Enter Dr. Stanley Cohen. Inspired by Levi Montalcini's work, he begins his own experiments, searching for something even more potent. Years of painstaking research lead him to EGF, epidermal growth factor, a molecule capable of regenerating skin cells with astonishing speed. By the 1980s, Cohen's discovery earns him the Nobel Prize. But the excitement quickly fades. Instead of revolutionizing skincare, EGF is relegated to scientific papers and whispered conversations in research labs. Why? Was the world not ready? Or was there a more unsettling reason? A reason rooted not in science, but in business and power? Cohen's breakthrough was ahead of its time, but as we'll see, that was only the beginning of the mystery. Three, the challenge of stability. Growth factors held the promise of youthful, regenerated skin, but science had a formidable adversary, time. These delicate proteins were notoriously unstable, degrading rapidly when exposed to heat, light, or even the air itself. For skincare, this was disastrous. In laboratories across the world, scientists tried and failed to harness their power. Each new formula brought hope only to degrade before it could even reach human skin. The challenge wasn't just using growth factors, it was keeping them alive. We knew growth factors worked, recalls Dr. Helena Foster, a leading researcher in biochemistry. We just couldn't keep them alive long enough to make a difference. For decades, the beauty industry didn't turn its back on growth factors. It wrestled with them. But every failure only fueled the question, what if someone finally figured out how to stabilize them? Four, the potential of growth factors in anti-aging skincare. Growth factors don't just mask the signs of aging. They work at the cellular level, regenerating skin from within. Unlike retinol, which exfoliates, or hyaluronic acid, which hydrates, growth factors instruct cells to produce more collagen, repair damage, and restore elasticity. Imagine a skincare ingredient that doesn't just slow aging, but actively reverses it. Fine lines fade, deep wrinkles soften, skin becomes firmer, more radiant, more youthful. And the best part? These results aren't temporary. But if growth factors offer this level of transformation, why aren't they in every serum and cream on the market? Is it the complexity, the cost, or something more deliberate? In a beauty industry driven by trends and fleeting results, could an ingredient this effective be too disruptive? As we dig deeper, the answers become more unsettling. 
Fifth, the mystery. Why aren't growth factors mainstream? The global beauty industry is worth billions, a machine fueled by products that promise results, but often deliver only temporary fixes. What happens when a single ingredient threatens that cycle? Growth factors work. The science is undeniable. Yet, their widespread use remains elusive. High production costs and complex formulations are often cited as reasons, but is that the whole story? Imagine this, a skincare market built on endless purchases, serums that need to be reapplied daily, creams that only last until your next application. What if growth factors, with their long-lasting regenerative power, disrupted that model? Fewer products sold, fewer repeat customers. Some believe big skincare brands see growth factors as a threat, not to skin, but to profits. Is this just business as usual? Or is there a deliberate effort to keep growth factors out of reach? The deeper we look, the more questions emerge. Six, the future of skincare. Today, the tide is shifting. A handful of pioneers like Core Biogenesis, a secretive French biotech startup that has spent the past five years quietly working on stabilizing growth factors through oleosome fusion, are finally ready to bring their innovations to the market. Their breakthrough ingredients, now on the verge of launch, promise to make long-lasting regenerative skincare a reality. Clinical trials show promising results. Smoother skin, reduced wrinkles, and improved elasticity that lasts. Consumers are beginning to notice, and the industry is taking note. But the question remains, will growth factors become the gold standard in anti-aging skincare, accessible to everyone? Or will they remain a luxury reserved for the few hidden away by an industry that profits from fleeting results. One thing is certain, the future of skincare is being rewritten, and growth factors might just be the pen 